man, I, I just came up here with a song on my heart. It is turning into hours. It doesn't even matter. I just want you. Man, because you're the only one that matters. <laughs> Come in power. I just want you. Man, if you understood the way I understand, I'm about to cry right now. If you understood the way I understand those words, there, there's no way you could even think about anything else in his presence. When I think about God that way, I mean, when I think about this relationship that we get to have with, with the one who created me and created you and created not just the person, but the stars, the dust, all that brought everything together. Now, I mean, it's one thing for things to come into existence, but then there's another thing for things to exist and have motion and purpose in life. There's, that's impossible. The word says he speaks things that are not as though they were, as if they already exist. And, and we get to sit in his presence this way. Whoever wrote this song understood something that a lot of us may not understand. Is that in his presence, really nothing actually matters. There's a lot of things that are fighting for our attention in this world. You step out of here, you don't have to step out of this room in order for something to try to snag your attention. It's on your phone. It's in your head. We have so many things that are trying to grab our attention, but we give God our undivided attention. Nothing else matters. Man, what a song. I love the song. Good choice. Good choice. I feel filled. I'm, so, I'm sorry. I, that, this is how I feel right now. I feel filled in the name of Jesus. Thank God for that. Listen, we're in the series Multiply. And uh, not this coming week, but the following week, which is the 24th, we're going to have Multiply Week, where we're going to invite someone who does not know Jesus. Someone who doesn't know Jesus, we're going to invite them into this place. And we're going to pray to the Lord of the harvest that when they come into this place, God moves and he does something to grab the heart of the unbeliever. And there are people right now that God is speaking to outside that he wants to use you for. He wants you to open your mouth and say, hey, just come. And you'll be surprised by what God does in their lives. And you, you might be getting the next evangelist in this place. You might be getting the next Billy Graham, the next whoever into this place. You have no idea. So when you get into heaven, God's going to be like, look at all the people you brought in. You're going to be like, God, I only brought one. He's like, yeah, but he brought all of them, so you brought them too. You have no idea what God is getting ready to do with the people that you touch. Amen. So let's get moving. This is a word today that God put it in my heart a while ago, but God, God's word for me never gets stale. Whenever he get, puts something in my heart, it moves me. It, it's here with me forever. And I'm going to be speaking the words that he gave me over and over and over again to try to move whoever I can with the words that he gives me. Amen. Let's get into the word. Matthew chapter 4, verses 18 to 20. If you have your Bibles with you. Not if, but because you have your Bibles with you. Turn with me to Matthew chapter 4, 18 to 20. Amen. The word of God says... This is Jesus right here walking. He says, while walking by the Sea of Galilee, Jesus saw two brothers, Simon, who is called Peter, and Andrew, his brother, casting a net into the sea. For they were fishermen, and he said to them, follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. Immediately they left their nets and followed him, period. The title of the message this evening it's fish without the eye. Fish without the eye. Let's pray. Father, thank you so much for you call us, Lord, not to mediocre, but you call us to greater things. If we do life on our own, that's mediocre. That's average. But God, you call us above average. You call us to supernatural things. So today we ask, Lord, that as you speak today, you would, you would inspire us and motivate us, Lord, to draw near to you, that we would follow you, 
and that we would cause other people to follow you and walk in the supernatural. We give you thanks and praise for who you are in this place. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. All of God's people say, amen. 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 Thank you, Natasha. Come on, give Natasha a hand. Amen. As you notice, I, I titled this message, FSH, it's fish without the eye. And um, as a kid, I used to play around with words like this because I'm a very weird person. I, I was always weird as a kid. I'd play around with letters and just like, you know, do things and just spell out entire sentences and, and remove all the vowels from them. And I'd be like, oh my gosh, I could still read this. It's, it's silly, but I, I'd do it. But then I'd come to find that, it's, that, that the Hebrews did it for years. They actually spelled words without vowels. They never had vowels in the Hebrew alphabet. And so if you, if you look at, like, let's just say a sentence, like, well, not even a sentence, like the word Yahweh, it was actually spelled Y-H-W-H. But then later on when vowels came, they started putting things, they, they started spelling it Y-A-H-W-E-H. And so if you don't believe me, if we have a sentence I want to put up there on the screen for you, if you have that. Can anybody read that? Right? No vowels, and you can still read it. You can actually read an entire book this way without the vowels. And today I spelled fish without the I because I thought it was just cool to do that. Just kidding. There's a reason. There's a metaphor behind it. But when we start adding letters, we start to see that the word becomes a little bit more full. But that doesn't mean the effect of the word gets, gets so much better because we can still read it, right? And so from the beginning of our lives, the beginning of, of, of our history as people on this earth, we have things, let's just say we have wants, right? Needs, desires, longings, cravings for certain things. And as an adult, those cravings and desires and longings and needs and wants never go away. You know, I have a two-year-old son. He's always hungry, always has a need, always has to go to the bathroom, always wants to play with toys, always has a want, a desire, and a need. But when he gets to be 23, when he gets to be 40, those desires don't go away. He still has needs, cravings, longings, wants. Those stay with you. But what I've noticed is that from childhood to adulthood, the greatest need that we have as human beings is the need to fellowship, is the need to be with people, around people, the need to communicate. And I think that's, that's significant because that's what we were created for. In the beginning, God created man and he created woman, and he said it is not good for man to be, come on, alone. So he made him a help me to, to come and be alongside him so that he would have someone to fellowship with, someone to communicate with. Communication is one of the deepest needs that a person will ever have in their entire life. If you notice some of the greatest inventions that we have are based around communication or meant for communication. Before we, we had all these inventions, we would walk to each other's house, right? And then came the bicycle, and then came the car, and then came the train, and then came the airplane. Everything made you move faster in order to do what? Connect with each other faster. Those are the greatest inventions. And then we had the mail or the telegraph, and then it turned to the telephone, and then email, cell phone, texting, everything to make you talk faster, to communicate with one another. And we go deeper into this, we had MySpace, remember that? Facebook, Twitter, Periscope, Instagram, all these things were created to make you stalk faster, right? So that you could, you could see somebody's every move, that you could feel connected to them in everything that they do. And I find that to be amazing because it gets even deeper than that. Watch this. If you commit a crime today and you go to prison, your punishment will be for you to fellowship with Criminals, people who have murdered, steal, stolen, lied, raped, all types of criminals in that place. That's your punishment. But while you're in there, if you commit a, a, a crime while you're in there, what they do is they put you in what's called solitary confinement. So the greater punishment is being alone rather than being with dangerous people. That's how much of a need we have for fellowship and communication and communion 
with, all, um, with, with each other. All in all, we want healthy communication, good conversations. We want to be around people that don't make us feel awkward or weird and all kinds of stuff. But why is that? Again, it's because we were created for this. We were created to be with each other, created for fellowship. Now, the Trinity, God himself, is, is when I think about the Trinity, it blows my mind. He, he is God. He is Father, Son. He is Holy Spirit. He is one God, three persons. That tells me before he created anything, he fellowshiped with himself. Before God created anything, he didn't need anything. He was God all by himself, and he was perfect all by himself, but still yet he chose to create things. God loved by himself. In fact, he is love by himself. God without people is still love. And God has unity by himself, community by himself, relationship by himself, diversity by himself. Before he created anything, he was perfect and God all by himself. And some people um, say that God created people because he was lonely. No, 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 no. God is one God, three persons, never lonely. He was perfect in his being and who he is. But because he wanted something else, this is my, my theology here. I think God created people because he wanted something else to experience the type of love and communion that he has by himself. And so he created things. So what I'm saying is that you were created, listen to this, to have an experience. You were created to have a, a, an experience. In creation, God saved us for last. Think about this. Created a whole bunch of things and saved us for last so that we would experience his creation. Just like when he, cre when he went to the, the, the first miracle that he did, he saved the best wine for, for last. So because he wanted us to experience something and you're created for love, you're created for free will, you're created for community with one another. So you were created to have this experience. And the next thing he will create is the new Jerusalem that is also for his glory and for our experience. I'm pushing this into your minds. God created you to have an experience. And Jesus said he came so that we might have life and life more abundant. That's an experience. So we can have all the basic experiences in this life or we can have an extraordinary experience in this life. But this extraordinary experience comes from a personal and a deep relationship, a communion with God. This is your innermost desire and some of us don't even know it. We crave a deep, deep longing and desire to be with God. To, to have him in our lives. But sometimes we're competing with all the other things that are in this lifetime. And so we give ourselves up to other experiences, which are natural experiences, when the supernatural experience is calling unto you. You weren't created for this experience. You were created for the supernatural experience. So what I'm saying is, if you never experience the supernatural experience of getting to know God and having a personal relationship with him, you are shortchanging your experience on this earth. You hear what I'm saying? God lays out the mysteries for us to find. And all the mysteries are here in the, in the, in the word of God for us to experience. The fulfillment of this experience is contingent upon what you do with your eyes. Now that's a metaphor also. When I'm talking about your eyes, I'm not talking about just your, your, your natural, I'm talking about with your eye, with who you are, this eye. What are you doing with, with, with me? What, are, what am I doing with myself? Am I, am I giving my, my eyes up to God or am I giving my eyes and keeping my eyes to myself? Am I keeping myself to myself or am I giving myself up to the Lord? This experience depends on what you do with your eyes. And the first thing I want to tell you is this. When you lose your eyes, yourself, you walk in purpose. 2 Corinthians 5, 5 through 7 says this. Now he who has prepared us for this very thing is God, who has also given us the spirit as a guarantee. 
So we are always confident knowing that while we are at home in the body, we are absent from the Lord. For we walk by faith and not by sight. Jesus said one sentence to these men that that made them lose not just their minds but themselves. He said, follow me. Boom. Before you knew it, everyone left what they were doing, left who they were, left their life, left their well-being, and just followed Jesus from a simple word, follow me. It may sound very far-fetched. Like you, you might say to yourself, but how, what, 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 how, who would do that? These guys were fishing. This, this was their well-being. This was their livelihood. And just from a simple word that Jesus came and said, just follow me, and they left everything and went. But God knows exactly what it takes to get you on this side. The, the question is, will you say yes? Will you accept? Follow me. And it got to the point when I, I'm looking at all these people, like, like Elijah. I'm looking at the disciples. I'm looking at all these men who literally just, just followed Jesus, like just followed just from a simple word, God knows what it takes. For me, it was a supernatural experience. God had to lift his hand, his protection off of me in order for me to go to a spiritual, you know, just cry in order for me to actually come to him. And I know friends who said, man, I just woke up one day and just felt like my life was wrong. Holy Spirit moved in my heart and I just gave my life to Jesus. But God knows exactly what it takes for each and every one of us. And he's calling out to you every single day, follow me but will you say yes? And that's, that's the big question. Will you say yes? When your heart hears the call, you can respond in two ways. Number one, you can respond with your eyes or you can respond with your faith. When you respond with your eyes, the way it looks is, is a fear of the unknown, a fear of what you're going to get, a fear of losing everything. When you respond with your faith, it's walking towards the hope to discover the mysteries that God has prepared for you. When you respond with your eyes, you're looking at the natural, things that, th- things that you're used to seeing. Water makes me sink. It operates this way. This operates that way. Things that I'm used to seeing, you're operating with what you're seeing, what you're, the natural things, your response. You say, man, I don't know. It's like the rich young ruler. He comes to Jesus and he says, what must I do to inherit the kingdom? And Jesus tells him, drop everything, sell everything, and follow me. And the first thing he responds with is with his eyes. I, I see my money. I see the things I'll be losing. I see the natural. But God is like, no, 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 no. Shut your eyes. Move with your faith. And come into the supernatural. See with me. See with God. He said, you're not going to, to, you might lose this, but you're going to gain so much more. God is saying, come. Come into the kingdom. I'm going to show you your real purpose. I'm going to show you what it's like to move in the supernatural and have a real, true experience that I want you to have. You have to be willing to lose your eyes in order to walk into this kingdom. Lose your desires for destiny. Lose your wants for your needs. Lose your life for the abundant life. Amen. When you're willing to lose your life, God gives you a more abundant one. Abundant meaning abundant with purpose. Abundant with meaning. Abundant with a a fulfillment of who he is. How many people just want to live some mediocre life, just walking in the dark, not, not knowing exactly who they're called to be, just lost? But God said, I have so much more for you. Some of you think that you're doing what you're going to do for the rest of your life right now. And I got to tell you something, you're wrong. So you think, this is the job that I'm going to be at for the rest of my life. You're wrong. You have no idea what tomorrow holds for you. But can you imagine walking through this life just, just, just blindly walking, trying to feel out for who you're, you're supposed to be, called to be? God is saying, come to me, and I'm going to show you. I'm going to give you a purpose. I'm going to give your life meaning. Amen. The second thing is this. I don't need to be there for God to do the work. 
I don't need to be there for God to do the work. One of the most powerful and mysterious and significant characteristics of God, like we were talking about earlier, is his Trinitarianism. One God, three divine persons. And, and, and John the Baptist, unlike us, gets to experience God in a way that I think no one else even in the Bible got to. John is baptizing Jesus, and all of a sudden, the Holy Spirit comes in the form of a dove, and Jesus is being baptized and, and wrapped in light, and the Father's voice comes down from heaven. He experienced the Trinity right here, right there. Like, I don't know about you, but I want that experience. And, and I think that's where God wants us to be also, not baptizing Jesus, obviously, but I think God wants us to, to have an experience of the fullness of who he is. But we'll never be able to have that kind of experience if we're too busy chasing other experiences in this lifetime. But a bigger reason as to why he wants you to have this experience, to get to know who he actually is, is so that you could share it with other people. And the, I think the biggest problem for me would be if I heard about Jesus and, and I came and I always talked about Jesus, even preached about Jesus, but never had an experience with the Holy Spirit. That would be problematic for me because how do I tell you about this supernatural experience if I've never had it myself? The first moment that I, I experienced the Holy Spirit was actually right here in that seat. One, two, the third one, the fir third row right there. I, I craved God so bad. I was always coming here in this room, coming about, what, 11 years ago. Coming to this room, just, just seeking God, wanting him, people crying in front of here, and me saying, God, I want that. I, I want that. I want what they have. I don't know what it is. I just know that my life needs more purpose. I feel incomplete. I have a job, it pays well. I have parents who are not divorced. I have things in my life that anyone would say, man, you're, you're, you're living all right. But I didn't feel all right because there was no sense of meaning. There was no purpose. So I said, God, I want that. And I would come every day and just, and just pray and say, God, I want this. I want. And every time the pastor would call somebody up to the front, I'd come up and be like, me, I want the Holy Spirit, me, right here. And every time I came up, I'd pray nothing. Next week, I come back and do the same thing, nothing. And then one week, I'm sitting there, and then he goes, if anybody wants the Holy Spirit, wants a, wants a touch from heaven, wants a touch of God, wants to experience God in a different way, um, you don't have to do anything. You could come up here or you could stay in your seats, whatever you choose to do, do that. And so my mind said, go up there because you're going to get this experience. And instead of going up, I said, you know what? I've done it a few times before. It's all good. I'm not going to go up there. I'm just going to sit right here. And in that moment, I sat, turned around, and got on my face. Kneeling down, I said, Lord, if you never come, that's all right. I'm still going to be chasing. I, I, it's just like the song, I just want you. I just want your presence. I just want to be in your presence. And... I just sat there and I said, let me just pray. I started praying this generic prayer for my mom, for my parents, for my friends, for myself. And as I'm praying there, before you know it, I started to have an experience that I've never had before in my life. I, I saw words that I couldn't even understand pass before my face. And I, I was just speaking. And before you know it, I just started speaking, which is in tongues, had any, no idea what that was. I'm speaking in tongues. I'm sitting there reading, and I, I didn't even know. It's about maybe a minute in before I realized I was actually speaking in tongues. And I started crying, and I started screaming and shaking in my chair. And before you know it, I, I, I just was like, this is a crazy experience. And by the time it was over, I was sure my shirt was wet from, from tears. I looked down. It was nothing. I didn't understand what was happening. I must have been crying in the spirit. But I was for sure I had tears in my eyes, but I didn't. And I got up and I felt so much joy and love and peace. And that was my first experience being baptized in the Holy Spirit. And I know we don't talk about this. We don't talk about Bruno. I get it. Y'all have no idea what that even means. I don't got kids. But, 
But I, 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 know, I know some people say like, oh, don't talk about that. It gets a little so uncomfortable. No, no, no. It shouldn't be uncomfortable. Why? Because it's in the word, right? It shouldn't be uncomfortable. Actually, it should be uncomfortable because it's in the word. But you need to understand the types of experiences God wants you to have because what he wants you to do with that experience is to share it with somebody else. Because we are living in a broken, lost, and dying world that God wants to give a supernatural experience to. And he's not calling anybody else to do it. He's calling you to do it. So he's calling you to experience him so that someone else would experience him through your works. Amen. This invitation brings you to this unknown place. He called these disciples to this unknown place. They had no idea where they were going this mysterious, this movement that they were going into, it's a scary but yet exciting thing. And that's where God wants you. It's supposed to keep you on edge all the time, right? Like if you're a Christian and you're living your life and it's like, this is boring. You're living the wrong Christian life. It can't be boring if you're following Jesus. It should take you on this mission, this trip, this, this up and down thing that you're like, I don't know what's coming next, but I'm excited about it. Amen. It should be exciting for you. It should be scary. But at the same time, man, I'm moving on this mission and, and I'm walking by faith and God has words for me all the time. And I can't wait for the next one. This is the experience that God wants us to have. And the biggest difference was not that, you know, when they, when they came to Jesus and they were following him, it's not that they were excited about being fishers of men. I think they were excited about following Jesus. Because if you ask me, fishing for men doesn't change your life, but following Jesus does. I, I, could, I could go and fish for men right now for some other reason. That's not exciting. But following Jesus does. It changes my life. It changes who I am. It changes my walk. So the greatest experience God wanted them to have was being in communion with him. When he said, I'm going to make you fishers of men. The fishers of men part wasn't important, but the make you part was super exciting because they got to be with him, commune with God, eat with him, and walk with him and see what he has to say next. It changed their lives. It changed them being some, to, into something else. It showed them the real love of Christ. So that kind of love and that kind of experience, again, will show others. And we talked about God being God by himself, that Trinitarian God. And, and Jesus did not need, let's, listen to this, the disciples really to, to fish for men. He, he didn't need them to do anything, but he wanted them to do it. In fact, he was fishing men by himself before the disciples. He got the disciples. That was fishing men. Jesus could have literally took his ministry into years and years and lived till today Still evangelizing and doing miracles and doing so much. But he, he, he could have done that by himself because he is God. But he chose to use us because he wants us to have that experience. And so he didn't need people, but he wanted people. I don't know about you, but I don't, I don't want to be needed. I want to be wanted. I'm getting ready to move. And if, if I have people in my life who I call friends... And I've never called and I've never talked to in a while. And I say, hey, man, how you doing? They say, man, I'm doing great. It's like, hey, um, I need you real quick. Bro, you ain't talked to me in a year and you need me, right? You only calling me when you need me? And y'all laughing because y'all got people like that in your life right now. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't talked to you in a year. You need me? Nah, bro, I need you real quick. But then imagine if they just call you because they want to talk to you. I just want to talk to you. I, I want you to be in my life. I want you to be a part of my space, right? God doesn't need us, but yet he still wants us. And the crazy part about him wanting us is who we are. This filthy and broken people that makes mistakes, but yet he says, I trust you with my gospel. I trust you with the most important thing that has ever hit this world. I trust you with it. I put my, my, my good wine in, in broken vessels. Because I trust that I could still use you even in your brokenness. You know what would be crazy if we were perfect people? 
And God's like, I want to use these perfect people. It's like, so what? But man, I want to use these broken people sounds so much better. Because it proves his power. It proves his deity. It proves who he is. I've done things that I, I can't even put into words as to how much I didn't deserve to do it. I remember walking in Meisner Park coming from a wedding and hanging out with a friend of mine and we're just sitting there having a conversation and I saw this girl pass by and something in my mind told me, go talk to her. And in that moment, I said, no, because I'm scared. She goes into a bar and she spends about 15 minutes there and she begins to walk by and then God said, go talk to her. And in that moment, I said, man, this is God. I can't ignore this. And I told my friend, Please excuse me, I'll be right back. I walked up over there and I approached this lady who had a red dress on, just came from a bar, and she, she was very, like, pretty. And obviously she's thinking I'm coming up to her to talk to her about, hey, uh, I, know, I think I know you from somewhere, right? One of those lines. I have no idea what I'm going to say. I'm allowing the Holy Spirit to move. I walk up to her and I said, excuse me. She said, yes. I said, I feel like God has a word for you. <laughs> she said, yeah, nice pickup line, right? I feel like God has a word for you. She said, God? I said, yes, I feel like God has a word for you. And at this moment, it was so weird because in my heart, I felt like this was my literal sister that was getting ready to die. It felt that way. And I had so much compassion in my heart for this girl, I didn't know where it came from. I said, God has a word for you. She said, she said, okay, what's the word? And at this point, we're talking and we're walking and we're sitting on one of those, uh, what the, the fountains in Meisner Park. And I'm sitting there and, I, and my friend's way in the, in the corner. And I said to her, God is saying that you're in a dire situation and you need to leave. And I told her, it is, it is imperative, it is, it's, a, it's now, you have to go now. This girl broke down in tears, started crying. She said, how do you know? And at this moment, I'm surprised myself, I'm like, uh, this is getting weird. I said, I said, I told you God had a word for you. I just feel like there's compassion in my heart for you. And I'm, I'm telling you, I feel like God is telling me you need to leave now. I said, does that mean anything to you? She's shaking her head like crying and yes and tears and everything. And then she said, the crazier part about it is I was driving on the highway three days ago. And I stopped in the middle of the highway and I started hitting my hand on the steering wheel and saying, God, you don't care about me. She was from Ethiopia. She has a husband in Ethiopia and a kid in Ethiopia. And as I'm talking to her and I'm, I'm con consoling her and I'm telling her these things, and then she says, I know exactly what I need to do. I need, I need to do this. I need to do that. She said, thank you so much. She, she storms off. She goes into the distance. I didn't, I didn't see her. No, I'm sorry. She, before she did that, she actually came and she talked to my friend. My friend had walked over and it was a girl. They, got, they exchanged numbers. That's what it was. And then she walks away. Two weeks later, my friend calls me and said, hey, I talked to that girl. I said, yeah, what happened? What she said, she said, um, her husband, that's how I learned about her. She said, her husband is in Ethiopia and her son, and she's been praying that they would be able to come. So what happens was, instead of them coming, she ended up going over there. But she was living with somebody here that was, I don't know if it was abusive or something like that. But she was living with somebody. It was a horrible situation. And she didn't know how to tell the person that she needs to leave. And so at that time, she made the decision to actually just book a plane ticket, leave, and go back to Ethiopia with her family. And so me, as a broken person, a broken vessel, jar of clay, have no idea what's going to happen when I just say yes. And this was a decision that I made to say, I'm going to be obedient and just say yes to God Whatever comes out of that, I'm just going to open my mouth and allow the Holy Spirit to speak through me. You will see the power of God. Pray about it. Say, Holy Spirit, use me and let me see your power. And he will. He'll show you these things. The greatest experience that God wanted, you, wanted them to have was to be in community with him. 
I was not so much impressed by what happened. I was just more impressed that God would do something like that through me. And if you've never experienced God that way, I, I, I plead with you. Pray to the Lord and he will use you this way. Amen. So God may be asking you to move in faith. This week, he may be asking you to move in faith. He'll speak to you and say, I want you to talk to this person. Will you say yes? I want you to move in faith and, and go about into whatever spaces that you are in, whether it's school, church, work, home, family reunion, wherever it is that you get to go this week. Ask God, what do you have for me? Should I talk to someone? Should I open my mouth and say something? Because I want to experience your power. I want to experience what, what you, you did with the pastor. I want to experience this. And you'll see God move. Amen? Can we put, oh, it's already on the screen. When I look at this, I go, read that for me. Come on, say it loud. Fish. I will make you fishers of men. I read that, I go, wow, fish. And I could still read it because it's, it's obvious, fish. But it doesn't need I. The same way fish, you could read it and you don't need the I. It's the same way that the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit could go fishing for men and I don't have to be in it. But the, the crazier thing about this is this. If you take out FSH, if you take out the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, you can't fish. You're just left with I. He has to be in it in order for it to make sense. If you go out there by yourself to do this by yourself, it's just a work that's going to tire you and wear you down. You'll be discouraged, hopeless. But God gives it purpose. When he's in it, he gives it purpose. He gives it meaning. He gives you meaning. And so when you put him in, in this whole thing, this whole mission, that's the only way it makes sense. I'm telling you today, that you can be a fisher of men, but make sure you go with God. Make sure you go with the Father. Make sure you go with the Son. Make sure you go with the Holy Spirit and you will see purpose in your life. Amen. Can we stand together? A, a lot of times, we go out and we're, we're blinded by a lot of things that are, are grabbing our attention. We're blinded by just the, 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 the toil of the day, the work of the day. Sometimes we're, we're blinded by even the things that we're thinking that we have to do in the future. It's hard for us to live in the moment. But today I know that there is an evangelist in you. I know that there's a fisher in you. Because God says that he will make you. He will make you. Fishers of men. The word men is anthropos, which means men and women. He will make you fishers of men. So today, don't think about the work that's behind it, but think about the relationship that's behind it. Think about the experience that you get with God, when you think and focus on the communion with the Holy Spirit, all fear is gone because God is love and perfect love casts out all fear because fear involves torment. God is not calling you to torment when he's calling you to evangelize. God is calling you to love because you'll be communing with him and loving on people at the same time. Will you say yes? Will you move on his word? God is calling you to do greater things. God is calling you to simply open your mouth and you will see 
your purpose and you will see his power. Come on. What space are you in? You on a team somewhere? You in a class somewhere? You in a group? God is saying, open your mouth. Invite them. They will come. With a show of hands in this place, all heads bowed and eyes closed. Number one, if you don't have a relationship with God, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, and you feel that if you walked out of this place and you lost your life, you wouldn't even know if you would be in heaven because your relationship is not tight with God like that. Forget the experience, you don't even know him yet. And if that's you today and you want to give your life to Jesus and say, God, use me. Lift up your hands right now, I'll see you, and I'll be praying with you that you would have eternity with Jesus Christ someday. I see you, and I see you, and I see you. Hallelujah, Lord. I see you. Keep your hands up. I'm going to pray with you. Way up. I don't want you to be shy about it. God said, don't be shy. Hallelujah. If that's you who's lifting your hands right now, that's five. If that's you lifting your hands right now, right now I'm going to ask you to repeat after me. Father, in fact, everyone repeat after me. Father, I come before you broken. A sinner. I ask for your mercy and your grace. Jesus, I'm imperfect, but I believe that you are a perfect God. 100% man and 100% God. And you died on the cross for my sin so that I would have life with you. Jesus, I believe that you are the Messiah and the Son of God. I give my life to you. And this day forward, I want to walk with you and make you the Lord of my life. I leave my past behind and I look to the cross and I cling to Jesus. If you said that prayer tonight, God is saying, the Holy Spirit will come inside of you. He's in you now. And he's going to lead you into all truth. And you have a place with him in eternity. Another thing I'm going to make a call for really quickly, and I'm going to ask you if that's you. Just come right up to the front and I'm going to pray with you. If you want to have that experience with God that I was talking about, that's going to lead you to bring people into his kingdom. And you want that this evening. Come on up here and I'm going to pray over you. Hallelujah.